Hey folks, Will here again with Happily Ever Outdoors and welcome to another Saturday sit down. This week we're going to talk about old school gear as well as the small outdoor content creator community here on YouTube. So keep watching. Alright guys, so what do I mean when I say old school gear? Well, that can quite literally mean gear from another generation. We're talking about uh, vintage equipment, vintage clothing, uh, that was the stuff that maybe your dad, your granddad, or your great granddad might have used when he was out exploring the great outdoors. But something doesn't necessarily have to be old in order to be old school. There's a lot of great gear out there that's stuff that might have been made the same for 20 or 30 years. We're talking about knives, we're talking about clothing, uh, stuff that's readily accessible if you know where to look. First, one of the things I'd like to talk about is military surplus. Now, all military surplus really means is it was gear that was designed for the military, whether that's in modern time or times past. Either it was stuff that was issued and then uh, it had its use, had its time in the field, and it was turned back in, and then eventually it was sold off to the open market. Or sometimes it's just the excess gear that's brand new that for whatever reason, it just didn't get issued, and then it got turned over to the civilian market. And I've actually been able to pick up a couple of shoulder bags that are a great example of this. This one right here is a shoulder bag that I picked up online. I believe this is Czech. Uh, a check shoulder bag but this is a basically waterproof material and I was able to pick these up for super super cheap I want to say I got like four of them for like twelve dollars you can see it's not super big but it's definitely big enough to carry your main stuff if you want to bring your fire kit a few things to go bushcrafting out in the woods and again perfect for rainy weather things like that because it's not gonna soak up the rain and uh, get your stuff all wet but this is something that's really practical really affordable it's a great bag to have for those wet days also great for kids if you're just getting your kids started my kids carry one of these when we go out to uh, have some fun out in the woods and uh, works real great another one I was able to pick up for right around $12 I believe is this British M37 uh, it's marketed as a haversack but this was actually originally a backpack you can see there was uh, some other straps that were made to go with this so that you can wear it on your back uh, but they just marketed it as a shoulder bag so this is definitely a lot bigger very simple there's no compartments or anything inside of it um, but if you want something that's just very very kind of that old cool vintage look to it that's um, got a little bit of more uh, cargo capacity in it this is a great way to go now this is just scratching the surface when it comes to military surplus there's a ton of great gear that you can get out there that's really sturdy that's made to take a beating and you can get it for cheap so if you have a favorite military surplus gear find feel free to share that in the comments below next I want to talk to you guys about wool now wool is a fabric that has really become underappreciated as the years have went by even in the outdoor community um, it kind of fell way to the back burner in favor of a lot of these man-made materials these high performance fabrics but the reality is wool has some very distinct benefits that you don't get with a lot of other fabrics number one if you get wool soaking wet it's still gonna keep you warm another benefit worth mentioning is that wool is actually naturally flame retardant and even if it does get burnt it's not gonna break down and stick to your skin and cause worse damage like some of the man-made materials will one thing you'll probably notice with a lot of high performance fabrics is that when you go and do something really high activity like going to the gym where you sweat a lot you start smell really bad really fast because that bacteria starts building up immediately with wool it really fights that off which is why you're actually starting to see a lot of companies coming back with high performance wool product you're seeing it in socks underwear base layers every layer of clothing you can imagine they're starting to come out with this stuff again because they're realizing it's just so hard to beat now merino wool is absolutely awesome don't get me wrong low to no itch whatsoever it's got a nice feel to it but the trade-off is everybody knows merino wool is very very expensive I mean big money but if you can handle just a little bit of itch and maybe a little bit of scratch there's a lot of great wool gear that you can get for super cheap now there's basically two main companies that make this one of them is Rothko which is kind of the name brand and the other one is basically your good old-fashioned 
government issued style US prisoner made wool watch cap. Either way, it's a great cap. You can find them in a variety of different colors between the two different brands. And this has always been one of my go-tos. Again, this is not merino wool. So if you're very sensitive to wool, this might not work out well for you, but these are super, super warm, really, really great beanie. And you can get them for right about 10 bucks. So that's pretty hard to beat. Of course, we can't talk about wool without talking about button up wool shirts. Now this is one shirt I was able to pick up used for I think I paid four dollars for it I mean dirt cheap and this is about I believe 80% wool so not quite hundred percent it's a little bit big on me but that's perfect for when you're going out in cold weather great for doing kind of bushcraft type stuff or just light hikes out in the woods now if you're like me when I first started wearing you know high uh, percentage wool products 100% wool products that were non merino uh, I had a lot of itch but after wearing them for a little while I kind of got used to it I kind of built up a tolerance to it so if at first you think oh there's no way I could wear this it's too itchy give it a little bit of time you might get used to it also if you wear a base layer underneath like a t-shirt or if you have a good merino wool base layer uh, you won't have to deal with that itch of course with wool just like any other outdoor clothing layering is important and this was a heavier weight shirt that I was able to pick up and I think I paid five dollars for this one and this is absolutely 100% wool a much heavier weight than the one that I just showed you. And this is gonna be another great layer for hiking, camping, doing chores around the house. And for the weight, this is one of the warmest shirts that I own. Of course, no discussion about wool would be complete without one of these guys right here. This is a great hat. I don't even know what brand it is, but I've had this since I was a kid. It's a uh, good, it's sturdy, but it can handle a little bit of crushing. It's not gonna get deformed and it's got a pretty good water repellency too. If you want to learn more about how to find great wool products like this for dirt cheap, be watching because I'm going to have another video coming out on my YouTube channel very soon. Next, I want to show you guys a couple of old school knives. This is a really cool little knife and it is absolutely nothing fancy whatsoever and that's what I really really like about it. Um, it comes with kind of your standard Mora sheath, uh, but this, this knife is great because it has a, a carbon steel blade on it. You can see it's a decent little size, but it's just a very, very basic painted wooden handle right there, just kind of a rounded out handle. And uh, it's just as old school as old school can get. This is just a very, very simple, simple knife, but it works really, really well. Got that solid Mora blade with that really, really sharp Scandi grind on it. Um, and it's it's just a lot of fun to work with. Next up, out of France, we have the Openel number no. 9. This is a classic. You may or may not have heard of it, but it definitely has a lot of popularity. It's just a really simple design. The blade just folds out like that. By the way, you can get this carbon or stainless steel, and it's got a locking mechanism right there that you twist, and that's what holds the blade in place. But you can get this crazy, crazy sharp. Um, so it's great for a little light bushcraft tasks, a little bit of carving. Um, you know, making feather sticks, stuff like that. Um, it'll handle all of that, no problem. It's very lightweight with a beechwood handle, and you can get these in a variety of sizes as well. Um, it goes in a whole series by number. And lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about flint and steel. Now, the thing about old school gear is it's not necessarily always about having the highest performance gear. Sometimes it's about actually challenging yourself and kind of getting back to the primitive ways, and that's definitely what we're talking about when you talk about flint and steel. Now this is a little kit that I picked up on Amazon recently and if I can find the link for it I'll drop that in the description for you guys as well. But this was really inexpensive. I want to say it was around $20 and it comes with a nice handmade leather pouch and uh, you've got ooh, you've got a good chunk of flint that comes with it as well as your steel for doing your striking. Now this is not something I have mastered. I'll be perfectly honest. I got one of these because I wanted to start messing around with it, start figuring it out because uh, I love using a ferro rod, but there's not much challenge in there. And I think it's a really good skill to have. So if you're into fire making, maybe you love using a ferro rod like me, you might want to try flint and steel just to kind of challenge yourself, see if it's something uh, that'll work for you. Now this has only been a handful of examples of old school gear. There's a ton of great stuff out there and I would love to hear your guys' ideas in the comments below. What's your favorite piece of old school gear or maybe what's the best deal you ever found 
on a used piece of outdoor equipment or outdoor clothing. Okay, now that we've talked about old school gear, I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about the small outdoor content creator community here on YouTube. Now, I'm sure by now everybody is aware of the new monetization policies that came out from YouTube in the last week-ish. I talked about it last week on our Saturday sit down. There's a lot of people really stirred up about it. Bottom line is a lot of small content creators are about to get demonetized. Now our channel, we're right on the edge of meeting those qualifications. Thanks to your guys' help, we've got a ton of new subscribers. We're really close to that thousand subscriber mark that we need. And I've got to check on my analytics a little bit more, uh, but I think we're going to be good on our viewing hours as well, because they do expect 4,000 minimum viewing hours. Otherwise, your channel gets demonetized. Got to have 4,000 viewing hours plus 1,000 subscribers. So again, a lot of folks have been fired up about this. There's been a lot of talk going on. Um, and uh, a lot of good has come out of this, believe it or not, in my opinion. Uh, out of something that's seemingly so negative, uh, I've seen some really, really good stuff happening. And one of the biggest things, at least in my arena, kind of this small outdoor content creator community, is that it has really become more of a community. All of us have kind of banded together uh, to kind of see each other's channels, see what we're doing, see what we can do to help each other grow. And uh, it's allowed me to connect with people to find channels that I might never have really stumbled across on YouTube. We're talking about folks who've maybe got, um, you know, a thousand or even up to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, because there's there's folks even who are well above the thousand subscriber mark who don't have the viewing hours and ironically I know folks who have triple the viewing hours in the last year that they need but they're short on subscribers and it's really brought a lot of folks kind of from those little sub genres of the outdoor community the gear review folks like me the bush crafters the hikers the campers the adventure video folks We've all kind of got the chance to know each other and really see what everybody is doing. And what I think is so powerful about this is that it really gives us a chance to kind of come together, to collaborate, to share ideas, to help each other figure out what we need to do to move forward. So not only can we grow as individual channels, but we can grow as the outdoor community on YouTube to have a bigger influence, maybe to expose new people to getting outdoors, to enjoying nature, to doing bushcraft, going on hikes, all these different things. And uh, it's really kind of, I think, lit a fire underneath a lot of people, myself included. So with that being said, one of the things I'm going to start doing every single week on the Saturday sit down is sharing a small content creator with you guys here. And when I say small, I'm talking about anyone who's under 2,000 subscribers. So this week, the channel I would like to feature is Lone Woodsman. He's got a, a nice bushcraft channel. He does a lot of winter camping, things like that, using a lot of kind of really old school uh, equipment and techniques. And uh, they're just really simple videos. It's very interesting to me, very different from what I do because he really kind of teaches by demonstrating. And they're just really kind of relaxing, calming videos to watch. I don't know. I just think he's got a pretty cool thing going on. And what's really great is I actually uh, commented to him and have messaged him a few times with kind of some questions about what he was doing in the videos, trying to get some tips, uh, maybe on doing a little bit of winter camping. And he's always been quick to respond and very helpful. Just a really, really great all-around guy. So that's one of the awesome things really about um, when you subscribe and you follow um, small outdoor channels because they take that time and that care to talk to you and to help you out. And, and I will put the link to his YouTube channel in the description below. Now, if you've got a recommendation for another small outdoors channel that you think should be featured, comment in the description below. Even if it's your own channel, that's perfectly okay. Give me a chance to check you out. And again, this is another opportunity for you all to collaborate and for us all to get a chance to know each other. So feel free to comment, share the link to your channel, or share the link to your favorite outdoor channel, again, with 2,000 subscribers or less. Lastly, if there's a particular topic that you would like to see covered in one of these Saturday sit-down videos, or maybe you have a question for me, feel free to drop that in. We'll see what we can do.
So as always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button. While you're at it, you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any great videos. And you can even turn on those notifications and YouTube will give you a little ding every time we upload new content. Thank you guys for stopping by. I truly appreciate everything you do for me, my family, and this YouTube channel. Until next time, stay happy and stay outdoors.